All right, continuing on with the magic pill question. So since last week's recording, any new magic pills you want? I still vote for the limitless pill. That's the limitless? The yeah, <laughs> that is pretty enticing. It's very enticing and intriguing. Yeah. Well, you know, gosh. Yeah, well, let me explain. Limitless, if you haven't seen it, it's a movie with Bradley Cooper. on, And it enhances his brain neurological really, yeah. ability. Yeah, so I actually got the book and read it as well. And uh, a little, little different, but, but similar. And it's that uh, there was also the movie Phenomenon yeah. with <laughs> John, John, Travolta. John Travolta, where he has a tumor or something, but it flips yeah. that magic something in his brain. Yeah. And you can learn the language. And in it's a that day. old adage or, 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 or pithy quote that we only use X amount of their brain, which I know is debated a lot now. Like, yeah. do we really only use 10%? We've got that. Or I've, I've heard that debated a lot. I don't know, but I'm I, with you. I'd, it, 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 tails back into what we were talking about this morning in our in our guys group when you look at humanity family why does one person do life this way why can't they see that i and like one person said i'm just trying to teach my kid reality yeah. reality is reality but is it no <laughs> <laughs> and so we're always intrigued by story and imagination and invention and which is a part of reality and what is beauty and truth and goodness and nobility and what is evil and how do we define it and culturally and I yet again this morning I, I looked at the headlines and I and I told myself stop doing that because it now I'm irritated but it so it shifted my reality over and I, and I wish I could have a pill <laughs> that would just make everything okay yeah oh, gosh. well and, and then you wouldn't cause and then i would love because the, then life is boring and we're automatons and we're, there's no challenge and there's no sense of oh my gosh if i don't do this i might fail or i might succeed wildly you know the, but on that though it's interesting uh on the you know wanting my brain to function more to think about it, is there something i can do because we think about that we were looking this morning i've got my two watches on you've got your one and <laughs> we're measuring our stuff and it's telling us you know, helping us understand at least yep. uh, some, yep. some feedback markers, loop, feedback yeah. loop of, of uh, a data of where we are, yeah. uh, biomarkers, yeah. right? And and we, I want to, I want to get more. I would love to, yeah, have that pill that would help me access the the most of my brain. Though there's the physiological aspect of that. We would talk about what food am I eating, how am I right. sleeping, whatever. But then also just the desire. I mean, you were talking about our friend who was talking about a, a kid who doesn't seem to have the desire. She's not seeking to right. expand and understand her brain. And I wonder if that's as much as anything, just the willingness to dig in and want to be aware of what I'm thinking, how I'm thinking, can I get more out of myself is as big a, the willingness basically, uh, right. as the, the, much as anything. The physiologic side of the brain, like one of our questions about that particular human being was what if there is really physiologic missing Deficit. things yeah. Yeah. yeah like a true quote unquote disability you would not look at a guy in a wheelchair and say gosh don't you want to run faster if it's not even on the table but when right. it comes to the brain the problem is we don't have biomarkers that let us know oh yeah you're uh i was going to say clinically that's not even the right word you are uh defined as disabled with add adhd dyslexia or something like that and and because we're we're looking at that gray area of where the brain, no, yeah, yeah, the physiology where the brain becomes the mind, mm -hmm. and then we would say becomes the soul, and that gray area there. And why won't my kid desire to be first chair in the band, get an A in the class, not eat his Doritos or whatever the things are that I that I'm in, that I'm teaching him to try to desire? I don't. We're in the it would well, the core I, essence of humanity. I know, but in the in that deficit, if there is, if I have a deficit, can you I, improve it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well I, if you're the guy with no legs, the answer is no. You can't run, Kevin. I don't care how much motivation you have. There right, is okay. a point. Well, then, but then we're like the Eric uh, Weinmayer, okay, who's blind, and he's going, "Okay, I am blind. I cannot see." And I'll never think about that without asking him if he's pursuing technologies to help him see. And he says, dude, I was born with no eyeballs. It's not going to happen. Uh, but he's figuring out how can I do as much as possible anyways? How can I uh, raft the, the, the Grand Canyon and Climb hike? Climb up 
Mount Everest. Uh, Mount Everest yeah. and how can I do these? So he's not going to see, but what can I achieve anyways? And, and to your point though, is whatever level we all are, whatever deficit we may have, could we be well, weller? Yes. 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 So here, and here we are. So speaking of that, Dr. James, uh, so I've got a couple people, Julie Hammond and she, uh, no more than that. Uh, she's an autoimmune issue. So back to this, you know, what would you have a magic pill? She says for my autoimmune uh, issues, Katarzyna says, um, well, two, one to deal with my emotional challenges, PTSD, anxiety, and depression, and one to deal with my autoimmune challenges. Uh, Joy Elaine Reagan says also says autoimmune issues. So I'm the layman's here, here. You're the doc. I've been hearing this forever. If you say, Kevin, what are autoimmune issues? I don't really even know. Give us the def the layman's definition. What are the, what are the symptomatic issues of yeah. autoimmune it's, issues? It, this is great. So from a big picture perspective, to put it into people's heads, autoimmune diagnoses are now in the, it is the number one cost of American medicine. So people think of, you know, heart disease, diabetes, and all that. But if you're going to get a diagnosis, the most expensive diagnosis is autoimmune. So what are autoimmune? Well, most common is Hashimoto. So you've heard about that and your thyroid. The biggest one is lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, so let me just, what is autoimmune? And it basically, from a layman's definition, it's your immune system is confused. It, it, it gets confused between self and non-self. And that's what auto means. So an automobile is a mm. self-driving mobile mm -hmm. machine. That's what that word came from. Um, if you are getting an autologous blood donation, you're, you're pulling from your own blood and you donate it to yourself later. Right. So automatic means it's self-going and autoimmune means your immune system is now attacking self. So attacking or responding or sure. Now, yes, I use the word attacking because it got confused enough to think of itself as enemy as or, or lack of tolerance. Okay. So I love this conversation because it is quintessential and it describes what is going on in American medicine. That's equaling the, the incredible cost that we have with low good outcomes. We're spending trillions, but we as a people are not healthy people. Right. And the, this autoimmune growth is a good microcosm of what's going on there. So the immune system, people think of it as a light switch, like, oh, I was with my neighbor who had COVID. I've got to boost my immunity. I got to turn yeah. on that light switch. So th to go kill all these COVID or whatever viruses that are running around in my body. Now we got to smack them down like whack-a-mole and then I'm okay. There's no more of those viruses around there. That's just wrong. It does not work that way. It's much more nuanced. It's much more delicate and it's like a dance. So the reality is, is that you have all kinds of viruses and bacteria and parasites in you and on you right now. Mm -hmm. For example, so let's go with words that people know. If I swab your throat right now, will I find streptococcus? I think you say yes. You're right. <laughs> All the time. Okay. But do you have strep throat? No. Why not? I do not know. Because your immune system is tolerating the amount of streptococcus bugs that are there right now. Okay. Let's say you have a billion of them. And let's say I, if, if I get a billion... I get fever and sore throat and swelling. And do I have strep throat now? Yes. <clears throat> because. Sorry. So it's the thing that I'm dealing with and, but my body is doing what it's supposed to do. It's, it's tolerating okay. the current level of stress. Guarding me. But if I don't get two, sleep. If I two sleep. things. You, if you lower the threshold by don't get sleep yeah. and all of that, or then that billion streptococcuses. Now the immune system is, we're not tolerating that. I, I used, and I used to, uh, uh, annually get it around winter holidays, generally with yeah more late nights, less sleep, and sugar. Yeah, was a okay. Pile on the sugar. Well, plus in winter you're hanging okay. around other people. We we combine okay. into a room. We we change a lot of so those. So I may things. be exposing myself more and lowering my threshold, That's right. and now it goes boom. I can't. Uh, my and body says I can't. Looks over. Uh huh. Defend against this. No, it is defending against it. Enough. <laughs> it no no no. The tolerance level. It's. Because the defense mechanism is then fever, 
chills, uh, right? Yeah. Your 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 immune system kicks into such ways to beat down that level okay. of streptococcus to where it's not so threatening anymore to overwhelm you. Okay. Okay. So the best way to think about your immune system is like this: that when the fever and chills and illness symptoms are there, let's call that war. Army, Navy, Air Force, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the military is now out. Antibodies are, are out there doing more and they're gonna go shoot things. And this is, and you feel it. You say, gosh, I'm tired, I'm fatigued, my throat is sore. I need to go rest and drink water and you fast still and all that. You have seen Osmosis Jones. Have I haven't, but I can envision that. <laughs> you gotta go, it's, it's just a, a comic depiction of this. Osmo, it's Bill Murray, so there you go. Right, Bill Murray comes out and says, all right, guys, let's go fight the bad guys. Well, the insides are as he's, you know, eating slime and whatever he's doing. So, okay, keep going. Okay, but that is a mere 25% of the immune system's job. What's the other 75%? What your immune system right now is doing, Kevin, is diplomacy. Okay. Your, did, does your immune system know about those streptococcuses in your throat? Yep. Oh, yeah, they know very, very well. So think of diplomacy in America. Are we at war with anybody besides terrorists, I guess? I, okay, that's a difficult question. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But do we have a relationship yeah. with Canada? Sure. Is our relationship with Mexico different? Oh, yeah. Are we at war with Mexico? Is anybody shooting? No, no not. No, but we have a different relationship with North Korea. In a different right. one with Germany, a different one with whatever, but we don't, it's not open borders, it's relations, it's tolerance, okay. and we tolerate Canada in a way different way than, than other people, other nations. So your immune system, it, tolerance is the word. He just offended some Canadians. Oh, really? We, you tolerate well, they Canadians? tolerate us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's both, it's the bothness. We need each other. The bacteria need you. They don't want to kill you. They're not there trying every day to overwhelm Kevin Miller and, you know, make his throat blow up, that would be dumb. They would lose their host. Okay. Now, of course, they're not thinking. They, they're just doing, but the reality, same with a virus. A virus is not out to kill you. It's out to live with you because otherwise it would die too if you die. Now, now granted, it's very difficult yeah. to, for people to walk around thinking that way. Yeah. So, so don't, but don't think that, you need to flip a light switch on to turn on your immune system or go take some vitamin C to turn it on. That's, that's sophomoric. Well, that's, that's a childish okay. way to think about it. Right. Okay. And so back to our shows we've done on, we did one not long ago on COVID. What's the best way again, you know, it's to strengthen yourself so your body can do what it's supposed to do. But now autoimmune, autoimmune saying is a different it, It's different, right? It's your immune system. Your diplomatic core got the wrong memo. So a part of your immune system, your diplomatic core is sending signals to declare war on Canada. And the rest of you is like, well, wait, what, what? What you said is declaring war on my thyroid. Your thyroid. So now you're creating antibodies to your own thyroid and we'll call it Hashimoto's or whatever. Okay. Or you're creating antibodies to your own joints and we call that rheumatoid arthritis. So you said, so to name a couple of top uh, ones, thyroid issues, um, what you say? Joint issues, Joint issues. skin, psoriasis. Because uh, uh, I want I, people to hear this. So if they're out there, if you're, if you're out there, you know, trying to do your best and living as healthy as you know how, and yet you're dealing with X, Y, Z, it could be autoimmune. So what are, so list off again, some of those top symptomatic things for somebody who may not realize that they could be dealing with an autoimmune issue. Yeah, so that's, just, well, the, the, yeah, there, there's, well, a, but even uh, thyroid saying that is, okay, what's the, what's the manifestation of a thyroid? Correct. So the symptoms that they might be feeling, yeah. it gets very confusing because when there's confusion, people with Hashimoto's or Graves can flip flop and, and I, between hyper and hypothyroid function. And I hope you see that. Imagine that the American diplomatic corps sent out memos and people in Maine got the message that we're at war with Canada. Well, out come the military and the National Guard. We're going to shoot bullets. And over in, in, in Washington State, they're like, we just got a trade negotiation with Canada, and it's way better. Yeah. And they're just doing business, and everybody's loving it. The border's open. That's – imagine the confusion, mm -hmm. right? And so one – and so the person would say, one minute, I'm, I'm hyped 
fur and my heart rate goes up and my hair is to do the famous one. My hair becomes thin and fine because it's growing faster. My skin becomes oily because everything's going faster. My guts move faster, faster and I have diarrhea. My heart rate goes up and I can't fall asleep because I'm just all spun up. And then a month later, they go to high bow. Now the hair grows slower and the guts are constipated and the heart rate is slower and you can't get out of bed because you're tired. Confusion. That's what autoimmune is. Lupus reflects sort of the dreaded disease where everything in your body is fighting against itself. So there's a blood component, a skin component, a brain component, and it it's a really, really hard diagnosis. MS, multiple sclerosis is so nerves, like it's a demyelinating uh, disease. So the, immu- the, the, the theory is that the immune system is somehow attacking its own nerve sheath. And so the neuro- neurological signals go out there and they're confused. So one minute it's pain and the next minute it's tingling and the next minute it's numb. And the next minute you say I'm imbalanced. And, and if- so our traditional medicine docs, are they medicating the body for autoimmune or for the specific manifestation of the autoimmune is it, okay the modifi- uh, cuz you would say autoimmune that's what's triggering your thyroid issue and they're going to how are they so, so a little bit of both there and and this is also and that's why it's so expensive is because this is where there's a lot of new medicines so famously Phil Phil the left-handed golfer I forgot his name but he's on commercials and it saved his career uh Remicade or one of those medicines these are immunomodulators or biomodulating medicines. So they are changing the immune system. Well, that sounds a little bit scary. Steroids shut the immune system down like that. And you can't stay on prednisone forever. So if we go back to our diplomatic core, imagine that the central government just pulls the plug on all the diplomats Mm -hmm. and they, and they just shut down. So, well, if you're super itchy on your skin because you have a, a rash, well, that feels really good for three days and then you're done and that's how a steroid could work really well for you but what if it's because it could reset yeah it it could and then when they wake back up again it's like oh i don't i got a little confused there i'm back online and everything's okay but what if it's a more core issue and it's no the diplomatic core is rotten it's wrong well how do we change that so biomodular immunomodulators can do that but they're very expensive medicines this is a pharmaceutical pharmaceutical and do they have downstream consequences well maybe and in some people they do so the the list of side effects is really scary and and so a lot of people say well and you and i would say well i just don't want to get an autoimmune disease <laughs> i just don't want my but immune if I system come in to here get confused with a rage in autoimmune disease what are you doing both if you're raging autoimmune if you're phil mickelson and you've just lost your lucrative career i would say take the medicine because the fact that it's messing up your sleep and messing up your your home life, you're you're miserable. Yeah. This is where American medicine is great. This is like back when I learned this from you, you know, eons ago, just with that common cold or whatever. And I don't want to take medications and I can't sleep. And you're like, dude, if you can take a medication that will just help you sleep, the sleep is what is will help your, your body. Is re- even better medicine. Strength. Yeah. And, yeah. So it was kind of a lesser of all evils. Take the medicine to dry you up so you don't wake up, you can sleep. Yeah. Then your body has to heal. And I would go one step further. Why call it an evil? Medicines are blessings. Okay. Okay. But, but, and there are, there are blessings for an acute, an acute problem to save your life or or, or whatever, not a long-term solution. That's right. So, and I think we've said this analogy in the past to the, if your son comes home and he's on crutches and he's like, dad, I broke my leg at school. You would never go, Oh son that's a crutch we millers don't use crutches that's okay, like how right. weak you're being right. but if your son is using a crutch a six months later that, oh, yeah. yeah you're like dude you got to do the pt pain physical. and torture oh I see physical therapy pain and torture oh okay it hurts you right. got to do the pain and torture the pt right. of and that, inter- that is so it, interesting though because how i mean i know you talked about it before but i've never thought about it in that way that you know that how tangible that is is there anybody on planet earth for the most part who's going to break a bone, an arm, a leg, uh, they're going, they're, we're all going to get a cast, get a crutch. No, no, I've never even seen, you know, a religious sect that says, no, no, God will, even they're going to 
you know, attach a splint, put a stick on it and wrap some twine around or something uh, to immobilize it, let it heal. And then they are going to look forward to the time when they can take that off and try to recover. And, and, well, and they know they'll hurt. When okay. You remove the cast. Recover. Oh yeah. It hurts. It's terrible. Uh, and we don't do that with every other illness. Why don't we do that with, oh my gosh, you have high blood pressure. You need a high blood pressure medication for the rest of your life. It, it's asinine. And but yeah, keep why eating do- this stuff and keep being stressed out and keep hating your job. That's what's causing the high blood pressure, but take a pill. Yeah. Well, Be- yeah, then that would be going back to your son and going, dude, you broke your leg again? Yeah, well, quit jumping off the quit house. jumping off the roof. Yeah. When are you going to learn that there's a consequence? Right, right. Okay, and, and, and that said, and as people hear that, and we're talking about pharmaceuticals and whatever, do you get to the place of brokenness where you can never recover yes. or not need it? Of course. And then, oh, but, thank but, God for medicine. But thank God for medicine. And you have had so many experiences with patients uh, who are that, but you've at least minimized the medication and or increased their quality of life. And wellness. Okay, so yesterday, a friend of ours, uh, a patient friend went to her cardiologist and she said, she even came by, she wanted to tell me, she's like, forever I've had trigeminy, triple heartbeats. So it's an okay. unregular heartbeat in triple triplets, which is not a nice thing to have. Like you're at risk here. Like this is, and so for the first time in, in a decade or however long, the cardiologist is like, your heart rate's normal. And she's in our fast club. Oh. It's like, what are you doing? She's like, well, I'm doing fasting. Holy cow. And Keep- it wasn't the, a three-day fast that she was on? She's working up to it. She's not quite there okay. yet. But for the first time, she, she had yeah. crossed 30 or 36 hours. Nice. We did her uh, ketones here. So she's in the therapeutic ketone range and all that. And it's like, awesome. but the, I mean, and, and again, blow your mind. Is this some million dollar medicine that you're taking? She's already been on those. I was going to think, I, I love the word reset. So if we, cause we all know that my kids are, are so consistently my non-tech kids. I have some that, that know this, but you know, ultimately if there's a problem with the laptop, with the phone, whatever, just turn it off, reboot it. How, how and that there's 95% of the electronic <laughs> woes, just turn it off completely off and reboot it. And with our bodies, you just talked about the medication for, uh, what was it? Uh, autoimmune that reset can reset the the uh, immunomodulator whatever that, yeah they could possibly reset fasting it will as, as a reset the oldest medicine uh, yeah but that's Sleep one that we don't is the main reset that's true that's so true. there's and there's a lot of docs out there that use reset in their name and you know there's reset protocol and yeah. books and things like that so uh that the concept of reset also fit, it works with electronics but you can't turn a human on and off so that's where the the electronic that, that's like a car analogy, right? It's yeah. you, at some you, you point the mechanics. But but, the, but I do like that the sleep is your daily is a daily reset. opportunity to reset. Well, Not I could even go with up. every breath. Okay, we're getting too technical now. Uh, <laughs> but I like the fasting. I like the fasting is a reset, reset for yeah. your body to go. <gasps> I mean, it's like you're just rest. Let the digestion just, just let it go through and rest. Yes. and and will it reset? I love that. And. In our, so, okay, the, the reason we did a fast club was to be for the initiated. So uh, for the uninitiated, they can't conceive of a one day, two day, three day fast. It, to, the, to them, that feels moronic. Like, no, no, no. My mama told me you need to eat and fuel. And, you know, she loved me by feeding me. And it's okay. So it, it, it really feels. It's like the biggest it, it's, it's, deprivation. It's dep- deprivation. It's foolishness. Ever. And, and so we have to train those people and teach those people and get them to the point where they get it and then flip over that. And, and, and then, and it's the oldest medicine. It creates biochemistry in you that is doing something that is on the healing side. Now, of course, some people, if you're a, a diabetic and there's other issues going on, then we'd say you're so broken, you can't fast. But that's the rare exception. Yes. I just want to be Pretty careful. I, I, for people out there hearing it, I would, you know, just use your smarts. And well, common sense. so if your body, if your body's uh, top notch, you're working well, yeah. and it's efficient, man, you can, you can do it. I can fast. You and I can fast for, uh, you know, five, I did five days last fall or something like that. And still, uh, you know, light exercise. I wasn't doing marathons or something like that. That'd be great. Now, if your body's not used to it and it's inefficient, it's going to freak out kind of like withdrawal fair. Um, ish. I, well, yes, but even the uh, the the talented athletes out there, you still had a wave of hunger, a wave of yeah. 
fatigue, a wave of brain fog, a wave of nausea, the, the, a wave of a headache that, but you understand my body's not crying out for right. food. It's crying out for, well, uh, it's the mental uh, yeah, it, desire it, habit. A lot of it is that, and there's the physiology of insulin and glucose and, and the, the physiology of going into the fat stores and, and bringing that over into glucose. So if you're if not, people aren't good at that, even if they can run a four minute mile, they're still going to have a symptom. Okay. Well, so work up to it. Do the, yeah, you try know, intermittent it. fast, try you know, mm -hmm. okay. Delay it, delay. I like that delay, not deny. Okay. But back to autoimmune. So auto you said, if somebody uh -huh. comes in and I said, I said raging, which is not fair, but you said, okay, maybe a medication, but then also, and I know of course, well, it's, it's what everything, do we do? but what is some <laughs> of the acute treatments yeah. that you would, I would say, so autoimmune conditions are a consequence. Are there genetically predisposed? predisposed people, of course, but it, nobody is born with an autoimmune disease that I can't say never, maybe rarely, that would be the rare one. It's a consequence. So a consequence of what? Number one, if you're looking at dominoes that fall over that lead to what becomes MS or Hashimoto's is gut is the intestinal dysregulation of the American diet, we eat in the form of stress. And then what happens in the, 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 the uh, lay terminology is that leaky gut idea, which my dad was talking about, he's a doc in the 80s and 90s and got ripped open because of using those terms. And now in the most famous gut journals of the world, uh, intestinal permeability is now diagnosis. And well, what does that mean? So if the lining of the gut becomes leaky, to use a not very fair word, right? The chemistry is, of course, more complex than that, but becomes uh, permeable when it should be impermeable or it, okay. it should, you know, create a barrier between things and it doesn't. Then the very next cellular layer in the gut is your immune system. Okay. So... Think if your job, again, if we go back to war and diplomacy, let's say you're back in World War II and you're in a pillbox and your job is to shoot whatever's in front of you. Well, let's just say that normally you look like we're looking at our window, there's trees and a hill and that kind of stuff. Let's just say that we wake up tomorrow and that permeability is different and now there's a fog mm -hmm. or the trees are gone. Well, normally we're used to seeing a deer and we don't shoot deer because we can tell it's a deer, but let's say the next day, the deer kind of looks like a dude with a backpack on. So, I don't know, but I'm just going to shoot anyway. That's an antibody. Okay. So now your immune system is creating antibodies to self. Not only that, but this, this is called molecular mimicry. So molecules mimic other molecules. Okay. And the immune system is very, very good at determining which molecule is self or non-self. And so your diplomatic core creates antibodies to yourself. And it's sort of like, all right, I see you, Kevin. I, I know you. But let's just say you come in with a mask on tomorrow. Not a COVID mask, but pantyhose, you know, <laughs> with a gun in your hand. Now, if I think you're Kevin, I'm going to just ask a lot of questions. I'm going to put out some more antibodies, more feelers, and say, what's going And you're like, oh, I'm going to a costume party. Right. Oh, okay. But if you don't sound like Kevin, if so, I'm going to create my own gun, my own defense mechanism is going to kick in. And now, even if you're, if you're streptococcus, we go into a strep throat. But what if you're my own thyroid? What if you're my own liver? What if you're my own brain? Then the person out there, one person is going to wake up and say, I have brain fog. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Another one would say, I'm depressed. Another one would say, my first joint on my first finger blew up and is all red and painful and it could be the same dominoes called you eat crap and your gut is done and now your immune system is confused and the downstream consequences can be a hundred different symptoms you eat crap okay i want to speak to the person who's out there not eating crap they are sleeping well they've been working on these things you know they've been working on their stress and they're trying to address all those areas and yet they're still dealing with this and you still have, you do have upstream, you know, genetics, predispositions, yeah. deficiencies, whatever. And at the end of the day, we don't get to help everybody. And that's yeah. where I say, thank God for medicines. But, but, but again, is there any specific 
functional medicine protocol towards autoimmune other than the everything, the foundation of, of let's, let's look at what could be causing it for you. Yeah. That is well, then we would do labs. So, okay. uh, yeah. So in order to identify where, what antibodies are you making? Okay. okay. Your thyroid. So then if it's in the thyroid, we say, well, gosh, how much iodine do you have? And was okay. our American insufficiency of iodine part of the cause here? Did we talk about iodine? Because iodine insufficiency or even deficiency is making a strong comeback because why? What, what's your, what's the what, source of which iodine? Which is making food? a com come back? Iodine deficiency, deficiency. which okay. is related to the thyroid epidemic in our country. I mean, it's like 30% okay. of no, people. I remember talking about this eons ago because we were looking at my thyroid, but I don't remember. I don't so, even... so what's the main source of iodine? I, I don't remember. Salt. Uh, iodine oh, right, right, right. salt. So when I, am I right? And when I get salt, I, they have the one that says, this is not a. They do. Uh -huh. uh, deliver, it doesn't yeah. have iodine in it. And there's some that do. Right. I get Why that. is iodine making or iodine deficiency coming back? Because a lot of well-to-do people now have parents with hypertension oh. and they grew up. Is salt good for you? Oh, right. And the you think, oh, salt is yeah. bad for you. I want low sodium, low salt. So now they're eating low salt. And then when they buy salt, because they're well-to-do people going to Trader Joe's, what do they buy? I, I don't know. Sea salt. And does it not have iodine? It does not have iodine. Really? So I buy the salt that has iodine. Am I correct in doing so? I would, okay. but I'd go a layer higher and say, now we have the Himalayan salt yeah. and stuff like that. Well, the Himalayan salt will on the back of it will also say not iodized, but it does have trace minerals, but is it enough iodine? And there the answer is, we don't know. So is that the only place you get iodine? Uh, or kelp. How much kelp do you eat? None. Or seafood, not fish, but seafood, which is shrimp clam so and that's got its own it's got it's got its, its own, own problem. problem so so back at 1900 1905 the government said we're going to iodize salt and that cured the problem and people in middle states especially around the great lakes were famous for having goiter which uh -huh. is thyroid problem and all that kind of stuff because of iodine deficiency because they were eating freshwater fish people on the coast were getting more salt from or iodine from those so sources. why are we having iodine problems now again because People think salt's bad for you, so they don't use salt. And then if they do use salt, it's sea salt or fancy salt or whatever salt that doesn't well, have iodine. I remember iodine. you telling me, it was a long time ago, you are saying, gosh, Kevin, you, you eat no processed foods. Uh, right, from a sodium perspective. From a, yeah. Yeah, and I don't know. You so you need to salt your food. You, you said, yeah, you. I mean, not, not that I don't, but I thought about it some because, yeah, I can end up with a day of not having any mm -hmm. pretty easily. And so this also goes back to our multivitamin. So I chose a multivitamin that says, Hey, here's theoretically adequate iodine. Okay. And, and that's just iodine, right? So we got off down this iodine tangent thinking yeah, about, I, I do want to say, cause you, you mentioned a, a minute ago, just the word consequence, you know, that, uh, autoimmune is, and we're going to end up taking the whole time talking about <laughs> autoimmune, but I didn't know it was okay. that big a deal. Um, I mean, you know, cause yeah, you got the headline, the heart disease and cancer and whatever is the big thing, but you're saying we're spending more money on more money. I mean, I didn't heart disease that. still number one cause of death. The death, right? Okay. And let's go down that pathway: heart disease, uh, cancer, diabetes. Number four is uh, is now I think consequences of like uh, stroke or cerebral vascular stuff, which is still heart, but now five and six Alzheimer's, dementia. Yeah. And now creeping up in the top 10 is autoimmune as a cause of death. So it, it is a big deal. Okay. But I wanted to put out here that if you had, you know, 10 people who were all given, you know, maybe they got genetic issues, of course, and some deficiencies, and they're given some poor lifestyle uh, uh, ingredients, it's going to, their issues are going to manifest into different consequences. This person's sure. going to get cancer. Yeah. This person's going to get diabetes. This person's going to get heart disease. This person's going to have an autoimmune issue. Yeah. So this is just a, you know, it, put it through the filter. And for whatever reason, you, Bob, have come out with an autoimmune issue. That's right. And this is so important. This is so important because the American healthcare system is built on the symptom. Right. It's built on the consequence down here. Like upstream, here's what happens. And, and you and I are looking at that and say, it's so dumb. Why don't we just go upstream and 
disallow processed food because downstream there would be so much more. And I know it's a simplistic idea, whatever. No way. No, it's, it's, I just read recently again, you know, it consists, it comes up and now it's just a normal thing of, Hey, you know, we've got these problems because of these foods that are subsidized by the government. Yeah. Subsidized by the government. Can we We, subsidize carrots? Can can we subsidize (laughs) carrots and broccoli? Remember when George Bush or somebody said, I hate peas and the whole pea consortium (laughs) said, Oh my gosh, you kill our business or whatever. It, and, and you and I don't even begin to understand the, the complexity of politics yeah. and money Economy, and all of that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, nobody's forcing you to eat McDonald's. Nobody's, let's use smoking. If smoking is up here, one person gets cancer, one person gets depression, one person gets leathery skin, one person gets ED, one person gets, you know, why don't we just disallow smoking? Well, that's a thing yeah. we could. Or, and, you know, our Colorado, we just voted on, you know, should we increase the taxes on smoking? We always say, Yes. yes. Well, again, some libertarian is going to say, well, now you, the consequences of this and that and this and that, we just want less government and let people make free choices. And I'm like, but somewhere in the middle of this tension right, yeah. is, and that's where you and I are saying, look, it comes down to you. Personal responsibility. You own your choices. Don't let the government, don't let the business system, don't let you go out. And we are now in a culture where politically and all this other stuff, it seems like most people are like, heck, no, I want the easy pathway to be laid out in front of me so that I don't have to take personal responsibility and, and choose a hard thing to do like physical therapy. Mm-hmm. After my cast is on, I want you to rehab. I'm going to pay the PT person to rehab my elbow without my effort. Or don't rehab it and then subsidize me to live to a live without with a cast yeah. on. And now I can't type. So I need a type keyboard that's like this, and I, you know, or no, I just need a uh, stipend. Uh, I just need two thousand dollar check. Yeah, I to uh, right. okay, it's gonna get muddy there. All right, auto it, <laughs> autoimmune, <laughs> autoimmune. So it is a a there's a reset is needed. That's this is not just a a bigger reset. Okay. When you're think of a train, remember the fugitive movie and the train goes off the track and, yeah. and Harrison Ford is getting out colossal damage. Okay. That's what's going on in their immune system. Okay. The train is, has jumped track. Damage is happening. Your own immune system is shooting itself. Okay. How do you, but think of the colossal work of getting a train back on I the tracks. It, yeah. That's so hard. There's no medicine that'll do it. Right, the immunomodulators are just making the damage less. They're not fixing you, but it could be better. Are, are you saying all thyroid is uh, thyroid is autoimmune? No, no, no. There's other reasons why you're like if it's just iodine deficiency or, okay. or or other things can cause other thyroid problems. There's a whole textbook on thyroid, and one chapter is going to be Hashimoto's. So, so skin is another good area. Uh, atopic dermatitis and and uh, just chronic rashiness. Um, and psoriasis being, being one of these things that I, a one woman, you know, she had a diagnosis of really bad psoriasis for 30 years. She's been medicine, 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 creams, creams, creams. And she finally got a divorce from an abusive husband. And in a month, her skin is fine. Ugh. So again, her domino way upstream, the biggest domino was that fear, pain, whatever those things were leading to other things. And in her, a auto, her immune system was fighting, but sending bullets to the skin. But I, but I like that analogy because as you, I mean, we know that that's been a lot of my issue is, and I can't even use the word of anxiety or whatever. Cause I just, I like to run high. I want to be busy. I want to be jumping. I want to work out extra hard every day. I like the excitement. I like feeling up and I want to do that all the time. And and we're saying, yeah, but your body's not made to be, you're supposed to be at not just at sleep, but at peace and at rest. And of course my main uh, prescription has been uh, meditate, uh, you know, stop. And and it's your main deficiency. Yeah. But I'm just, yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, in her case, it's an abusive husband. Mine wasn't anything bad necessarily. It was maybe too many good things. I'm like, Kevin, stop, you know, have some margin, have some boundaries have some peace you know that are still because the body's okay the the classic classic example you're you're a good uh your example is a good one but here's the common one of what you said is a mom 
she loves being a mom and may, let's say a mom who also works. She loves her job and, and she can do it and she does do it. But as we said before, a common new patient is the 30, 40, 50 year old mom. And all of a sudden she's like, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And the doctor says, I'm depressed, but I'm not depressed. I'm just tired. But I didn't used to be tired. So I'm doing the got, same thing I've been doing. The guilt of, I, I have a great life. The, I, yeah. Good, great great husband, great kids, family, work. great. I love my work. I'm, I'm motivated, but I, and it's like candle at 10 ends. Yeah. And I look at them and say, why would you not be tired? Why? Yeah, but no, 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 no. I could do, I've been doing this for 20 years. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But you didn't sleep a six hour night sleep. That's not enough. Yeah. It's just like the guy who say, no way, doc. I have been smoking a pack a day for 40 years. There's no way that causes my cancer or my erectile dysfunction or my heart attack. No way. That can't be true. And I'm like, well, you can think that way if you want. But to the wise person, and you are wise, and you are trying to readjust your life to go to bed on time. To Even though you don't, quote, unquote, need seven or eight hours a night to feel up and high and get stuff done, you could do it on seven hours a night. You know you can't do it until you're 85 if you're selling yourself short over here. And then of course, it's an infinite mystery of, okay, where, where are my deficiencies? Where do I have to add? And, and all of that kind of stuff. So autoimmune. Yeah. 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 I, I think we should just leave it there. Uh, well, it's I've a got, good example because autoimmune touches know. everything. I didn't know. I didn't know. So, okay. So the, the balancing act, and, and, and if we kind of wrap that up with, with people remembering that it's, diplomacy it meaning it's tolerance not not the political you know definition of tolerance it is living in right relationship with um shigella and salmonella and giardia like in colorado if you drink river water you'll get giardia now one person's gonna heave their guts up for a day or a, a month and another person will say i'm fine okay don't say yeah i take offense at that if you drink well, you might get giardia I'm going to go with your 99% likely you have Giardia right now, Kevin Miller. If we, if we had enough sensitivity of testing your microbiome, see, this is another misconception that people have is that the, that everybody let's use uh, cholera. You probably have one or two bacteria of cholera in you. Okay. I didn't know that. Cause most I, I, people don't, they I, think I drink, if I get cholera, I drink water. you have Giardia. Okay. You're just tolerating it. Okay. Now, somebody else, if I go, since I'm smarter than you, I don't drink stream water. And then, <laughs> or maybe you're smarter, right? Because you can now live off the land easier than I could. I would have to train into doesn't, it. Get doesn't used already to it. come work way off track? I'll, I'll ask you after this. I don't know where it comes from. But, you know, it's, it's from fecal contamination I, of, yeah, bears and deers yeah. and whatever up there. If you go to the top of Mount Everest and drink the water up there, you're probably okay. Okay. So... But even if you go to Mexico or go to India, their microbiome is different than yours. Right. If you drink their water, you might be fine. You might not be fine. Right. It doesn't mean that it's dirty water. They're fine. It's just a different. It's a different microbiome. Okay. And that can, and now we're back to does that uh, is, so I ask people all the time, is there a travel related illness? Did you go to Mexico, yeah. go to India, get a bug and it linger? If that's a clue to developing autoimmune. Because it okay. disrupts the microbiome. You don't get back on track. That tolerance message gets a little bit confused. Okay, let me ask. Well, let me end with one qu one more question. So if somebody is hearing this, and I mean, if they know they have autoimmune, hopefully they've heard, you know, some some uh, directions to look at. But if they are hearing this and going, hmm, he said this, this what if I do? What do you, what are Man. your options to go figure that out. It's, this is a real toughie. And this is where I'd say, gosh, you know, our most common question is, gosh, how do I find a doc like you yeah. in my hometown? So in, in this area, and in fact, I would, we haven't ever said this, but I encourage people to send this podcast to people that have an autoimmune related illness to say there is a different way to think about it, not to throw away your medicines or anything, but give your body a chance to get back on track. Your body knows how to get back on track way more than any medicines or doctors or whatever kind of thing. So if people, and of course we turn to Dr. Google and you go to an autoimmune kind of thing, there's, if you go to an autoimmune, you know, what are autoimmune, there's about, I think it's 88 specific diagnoses. Like my son, alopecia is, uh, which means hair loss. 
uh, isn't yeah, I don't, I, I, don't know. I feel like we, I don't know if we shared that. You have a son, how old is he now? He's 10, 10, mm -hmm. 10 who's bald. Yeah. Everywhere. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Eyelashes, no, no, eyebrows. No yeah. So he looks mm -hmm. like a cancer patient. Yep. Uh, and it's, he's a healthy kid, but he's got, he's got an autoimmune yeah, condition yeah. That, uh, that you haven't, corrected. that we haven't figured out. Yeah. Right. So in fact, my next, so he, you know, obviously we're doing things. Is he on, on any meds? Uh, LDN low dose naltrexone is what we have been doing for some months. And we thought he actually got some fuzzy patches. I think I, I shared yeah. with you when we started that yeah. and then they kind of went away again. So, uh, we can end with this. My next thing to do, this is going to really freak people out is, is helminth therapy. Do you know what a helminth is? Was that the worm? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people hear helmet. And they're like, you're going to put a put football on <laughs> Cover that. <laughs> Cover a bald head. head. Helminth therapy. And if you Google helminth therapy and Duke University, uh, I forgot the Yeah, guy's we're talking name. about a rare treatment at this point, right? Oh, yeah. And expensive. Oh, yeah. Uh, not too bad. Well, nothing compared to immunomodulators. For the price of one month, we're going to do six months. Oh. So, but for probably 1200 bucks or something like that for six or eight weeks. And they're microscopic. This is not, he has to cut up a, a earth tapeworm on his plate or, or, or and choke it down. Sorry. <laughs> a maggot like on Survivor or something. And that's what everybody thinks. Now, these are microscopic. You drink a thimble full of water. Huh. And, you know, the company that we get it from guarantees and, you know, dose number one has one to five critters You've in there. You've done this with patients. I yeah, a couple about. patients. Yeah. We've done this. And one guy had diarrhea forever. Like imagine watery diarrhea two or three times every day for the last 10 years. No, you know, nothing, no, nothing helps. Been a GI, had the scope, blah, 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 did everything. And he, and he found me cause he said, I want to do this. And I'm like, Whoa. So I had to go and research that. And we did it on him and, and it, it he's doesn't have diarrhea anymore. H E L M E N T H H E L M I N T H helminth therapy might have an e on the end of that helmet i'm not i can't remember but high school biology you know you cut up a tapeworm and stuff like that that's what people think of this is microscopic and what does it do so this lamprey eel that's microscopic clamps onto your immune system and there's that membrane that we call permeable and you know what that does it sends a memo out to the diplomatic cord it says hey everybody calm down Hey, Maine, you were sending antibodies across the border into Canada. Stop that. Hmm. Sorry. It, it just sends a, a memo. And, and, what, and why helmets? And this is part of the hygiene uh, hypothesis. It, we are too clean. Too, okay, yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah. Our guts have been deprived of the soil organisms because – we're not an agrarian society anymore. And we got too clean. So when the next, just like Giardia, if my gut's too clean and I go get a little bit of it, I am at a high risk of a bad response. You're at a less high risk. Now that doesn't mean to go live in a cesspool and lick the dirt and do all that. There's the balance there. That's what it comes back to is, I hate the word balance, but it's a diplomatic corps that knows when to call out the military. When somebody's fighting us or we got Nazis or whatever, we're going to call out the military and we know when to be nice and play nice. And in the middle, it's like, hey, we got to do negotiations here, you know, and that's more maybe strep throat and uh, maybe halito bad breath, halitosis. That's, you know, that's a, that's a pathological state. That's bacteria. And I'm glad we I'm glad we did this because it's a great yeah. microcosm of how to think about what is being well, what is well being, and we take it for granted. And what is when things get off track? And the autoimmune situation is 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 a good example of that. Off track. Okay.